So, well, let's see, where we go. Here we go. This is Baruch Fleischman here at the Tikkun Elevator Kolo. And uh, it's really my pleasure to be able to look at this. And this is tell a little story. You see how they draw the circle here. Mahavdil, Elif, Alafe, Alafe, millions of billions of billions differentiated between this and what we're about to see here. And something I, t I saw in the early 70s when I was traveling in Iran. So when you went into in any public place, they had a picture of the world in, uh, let's say, in circles. The in inner circle is was Mecca, and all the rest of it was, uh, I don't want to get into this, but I started to say, was well, different rays going out through all the worlds. And this is the Havdil, to, to say to separate, that's what's going on in the Muslim world today. Because originally, you have here in Baghdad, in this area, a tremendous wellspring of Torah that is going out throughout the entire world. So we're going to come over here in this area, and we're going to take a look at some of the historical features that we have. But once again, the map shows you, all the way to the very far west, uh, Spain, North Africa, starting with Marrakesh and the Fez, and all these different places that Jews lived in the northern part of Africa, we became a trading people, a banking people. Some places became a wealthy people as long as it lasted. Let's go over here and take a look at this idea. He says, uh, let me see if we can get it down a little bit, even a little bit closer and try to move it around. So he says like this. He says, halachic questions accompanied by contributions posed to academies. In other words, they would write commu communities throughout the Mediterranean, all of these different, like I say, these are major centers, uh, by Jewish communities and, in and individuals. So there were questions who were asked, how do we do, what do we do, this is a situation, can you help us? He says, the response of, which is the answers, often dispatched through Egypt, which came through Egypt, and here we have is that this is uh, where the responses started, and here's Fayum and Fustat were Jewish areas in northern Egypt, then across from there, all also came through there. The responses often dispatched through Egypt from form corpus of, uh, of halachic literature. So this gives us an idea of how we practice Judaism, all came from this center coming out. Now, let's find number two. Where is number two? Over here. Youth, a youth from near and far come to study at the academies. And once again, he's pointing here to Pumbadisa, and, and we know that Sura, those two. Most return home as scholars, and some establish their own academies. Some appointed as rabbinic judges. Number three, that was the great thing to have a child. We still have the same thing is true today. Who's able to establish himself in a yeshiva or into a, here they call it an academy. Number three, go on him then, that is from the center. Uh, send special epistles. These are different halachic uh, ideas, our, our, our communiques to Jewish communities in the diaspora. The letter from Sri Ragon of Pombadisa to Yaakov ben Nisim of Kairouan lists generations of Jewish scholars. So these different ideas are transported, and therefore this is what he is saying, that uh, Dr. Beinart has evidence of these letters. Number four. Number four says, Scholars from Holy Land come to Egypt to teach scholars. So then you have also this happening at the same time. They're coming from the Holy Land and they're coming to teach scholars. So he says, number five, he says, Rav Sajigon exchanges letters with philosopher and doctor of Isaac ben Solomon, that's Yitzhak ben Shlomo Israeli, who emigrated from Egypt to Cairo land. So these are another set of proofs of how this is working that we have going back all of this time, approximately a thousand years ago, maybe a little bit more, 11, 1200 years ago. So that's the end of this, this section, this, this section that we're going to do right here, because I think as we move around, uh, let me see if I can find a way to get it into easily. We're going to have to go, we're going to go the next 
next section that we're going to get to is the Geonim of Eretz Yisrael. So we said that there is there are always been two tracts, and today one of the tracts is called Sephardit, the Sephardi. And the other tract is called Ashkenaz, Ashkenazi. And we see over here the beginnings. It's not developed that much yet, and it's going to be developed more in the next piece when we start talking about the Geonim of Eretz Yisrael and the Aliyah to Eretz Yisrael and the prominence of Eretz Yisrael. Because the people that were greatly influenced by Eretz Yisrael and want to come to Eretz Yisrael, these are going to be the communities, I think, that we're going to see develop into Ashkenaz. So we'll see how that goes. Maybe I'm wrong. So maybe it's something else. And we'll see how it goes. But over here, that those who want to be, I think I said that exactly opposite. The, the, it is that those who saw Eretz Yisrael, that is the Mediterranean, Eretz Yisrael is on the Mediterranean. So as Eretz Yisrael as a center. So therefore, they had to realize that that had the influence on what we call today the Sephardi community. This is Baruch Fleischmann, Satikwin Elevator Call Out.